Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday at Motion Raceworks. Today, what we're gonna cover are air to water intercoolers. So if you're building your first boosted combo, um, you may or may not know there's two different types of intercoolers. There's air to air, which is essentially um, a radiator without water. So you're flowing the air, the boost charge through this radiator and terms it's just a heat exchanger and the air flowing through the fins just like a radiator takes the heat out of it um, not nearly as efficient as an air to water which is essentially a radiator uh, but instead of a radiator you know you're using these for short terms uh, like on a drag strip or whatever and you're actually pumping ice water through it rather than uh, coolant in general that's cooled with a fan so an air to water intercooler is extremely efficient uh, gets intake air temps down to a point where you can really push a motor to its extreme power limits uh, but there are some caveats to how things work and if you've never used an air to water intercooler there's a right way and wrong way for a bunch of different steps along the way and uh, I feel like there's a lot of uncovered topics that people haven't really put a lot of knowledge into on the internet um, in the racing community it's all pretty standard and I feel like we all share a little bit but if you're outside of that it can be a little confusing so I want to show you today and I know I'm sitting here with an intake top style air to water intercooler, but these principles will follow along with a big brick style that would sit in your passenger seat or wherever inside your car, one that sits on top, one that sits out in front. As long as it's an air to water intercooler and you're using it for drag racing and short term use, this will apply to you. As I mentioned, we're going to use this intercooler as an example, but the same principles will apply no matter what style air to water intercooler it is. Uh, one thing I will mention about an intake top intercooler like this. Uh, high ram uh, sheer or low pro style is that you take away all of the extra bends i've covered this in a previous video i'll drop that in the uh, description below um, but every time you add a bend in a uh, charge pipe it reduces boost by uh, a measurable amount it's usually like half to a pound of boost per bend per 90 degree bend 45 would obviously be a little bit less so the ability to get right from the turbos into the intake without making a ton of bends and having a bunch of length of pipe not only makes spool time quicker but uh, increases power and uh, just simplifies everything altogether so on this sheer intercooler you have an in and out it's all intercoolers are gonna be the same way. Some have 16 AN, some have 20 AN, some just have straight hose barbs. Generally speaking, the larger the line you can put on an intercooler, the more flow potentially, I'll cover that in a minute, um, you can flow through it. And uh, much like I've covered in the past with a radiator, there's not really any electric water pumps that are gonna overflow to the point where it has diminishing returns. And what that means is you can flow a heck of a lot of water through it and there's no reason to slow down water going through it. Well, as soon as it touches uh, the surface and passes through, it's done about as much good as it can do theoretically. And the more times you can circulate it, the better it's gonna cool rather than the slower you move the water across. Keep in mind, we have an ice tank that we're circulating water through. So the more cold water and the more times cold water can hit that surface of the intercooler, the faster and better it's gonna work. For reference on this, I have a 5.6 gallon, five gallon for all intents and purposes, intercooler tank in my car. And I turn my intercooler on right before I do a burnout. Um, that allows the intake to pre-chill. We're not pushing a lot of boost or putting a lot of heat in the engine in the burnout, but that allows to start cooling intake, whether it's been in the heat in the sun or just heat soaking from the engine. And then I will run it all the way through the quarter mile, of course, and then in the shutdown, I'll go so far as to drive the car back without the without it on but my intake temps are not only cold but there's still typically a decent amount of ice in the ice tank meaning the faster we can turn that ice into hotter water the faster we're exchanging heat from the intercooler into that tank and uh, we never really utilize all of it so just move it fast it works extremely well but i'll cover that here in a little bit i want to go through my full process because this is a topic that you guys have asked for a bunch of times in comments on previous tech tip tuesdays so we're going to cover it so if your intercooler tank has a 20 an by all means put a 20 in what you have to remember is these have like 16 orb which means if you put a 20 hose on it it's really not going to pump anymore because your orifice size is smaller so you're not gaining a whole lot by having a bigger hose than the orb size 16 orb 16 an 20 orb 20 an 
on this combo on my Gen 5 LT Nova, at the end of a quarter mile pass, we will typically have no more than 115 to 125 degree intake air temps. So that's even the heat of the summer. Um, and we are accurately measuring it right here between the runners. So we're getting true intake air temps after it passes through. What we typically see is a 30 degree rise from um, the beginning of the run to the end of the run. And why that 125 degree intake air temp uh, is important is because it allows you to understand how much timing you can safely run. You know, if you start getting in the 200 plus degree intake air temps or 160 plus degree intake air temps, uh, you're getting into the dangerous side of timing and what the fuel uh, can handle as far as detonation and everything else in between. So again, 2000 almost horsepower on this Gen 5 LT Nova. This intercooler does great. And a couple of the key topics I will cover from here out are some of the reasons why it has such great success. As I mentioned earlier, I use about a five gallon intercooler tank. And the reason why I know that's more than appropriate and plenty is that uh, there's still ice in it at the end of the track. So having a big one wouldn't really do me any good. Um, it's still ice cold at the end of the pass and it hasn't used all the ice. So that's really the only metric you need to know for an intercooler tank as far as sizing. That's gonna hold true with these style intakes on just about anything. If it could pull the heat out, it would unless you have some crazy intake air temps that you just can't handle. I don't know what that situation would be. It might, it might change on a supercharged versus a turbocharged vehicle and depending on how hard you're pushing. We're almost to the limits of these turbos. So from a turbocharged application, we know that uh, efficiency and the heat that's going in, it handles just fine. Uh, sometimes supercharger vehicles ha will have higher intake air temps pre than a turbo, uh, just inherent in the nature of them. So on a turbocharged application, I have no problem saying a five gallon tank is plenty of uh, ice water. I do know that uh, one of our customers, Jason Riley, who races a orange limited 235 uh, supercharged Windsor motor Mustang, has like a seven or seven and a half gallon, but he's absolutely hanging the tongue out of a D1 style uh, pro charger. So a little bit different topic, but that just gives you guys a little bit of reference. The next topic I wanna cover is water flow. So when people buy these ice tanks, the uh, first thought is they're all the same, which essentially a tank is gonna be all the same. There's not a whole lot of intricate baffling or anything inside these tanks. Uh, the one thing that does change, a lot of these tanks come with a cheap rule style um, bilge pump, if you will, that comes from the marine world. And the flow is just simply not very much. You know, what that pump is originally designed for is just to get water out of a hole or move it somewhere else in marine world. I'm not real familiar with boats, um, but it's not meant to flow a high amount of volume and uh, it's not meant to flow it fast. Um, conversely, we've been using this Davies Craig pump, which is a very inexpensive pump. It's not a whole lot more than a rural pump, uh, but the flow is tremendous. Uh, on this um, from the design and the purpose and everything in between. And uh, as I said before, the faster and the more cold water you can flow through an intercooler in a given time, the more efficient that intercooler is gonna be. And that's part of the reason why I've had such good success with this style air to water. Um, it's a very small core, uh, but flowing water through it faster and with more volume is essential to making it work. Okay, so the next step, we've talked about fitting size, um, but I wanna talk about fitting hose. There's obviously a couple different uh, style of hose you can use. This is just like a farm implement, local hardware store reinforced nylon hose. Um, I see a lot of people run this and it does work overall uh, pretty well. Um, and then obviously you have your braided uh, style AN hose, which is also very common. Um, I'll just give you guys a couple thought processes I've had and things I've seen, and I'll let you make a decision from here. Um, I run this on the Bald Eagle. I don't run it on my Nova. Uh, and the simple reason is that nylon has a tendency to heat up and get hard, crack, um, lose its flexibility and everything in between. Um, again, I know it has worked for a lot of people and everything, but it's something I'm not willing to risk because when does this crack? When does it get a puncture? I don't know. Um, it has virtually no abrasion resistance. So depending if you're running it, uh, you know, through your engine bay, uh, through the inside of your car, if this thing cracks or bursts and it's got a decent sized pump 
or any pump behind it and it's putting five gallons of water somewhere, things are gonna get real bad in a real hurry. Um, so I always plumb a car that's not a burnout car with this AN style hose. Um, I've thought about, we had this stuff um, specially made and sampled uh, just cause it's cool and black. And I thought about selling it, but I've just never been able to bring myself to pull the trigger on it simply for that liability reason. Um, the heat resistance is terrible. The abrasion resistance isn't there and uh, long-term durability isn't there. Uh, this obviously covers all of that. It has no problem with heat uh, overall. Um, it's a good quality hose. The connections are tight. This is just a push lock connection, which isn't always the strongest and uh, its ability to have durability and abrasion resistance is super high. So think about it. I'm not gonna condemn anybody for not using the more expensive style hose. It is more expensive, but it's an investment in your own safety and the well-being of your car. Another shameless plug for a product. I try not to do that too much in Tech Tip Tuesdays, but this one's too good to not plug a little bit. Um, we made this firewall pass through previously you would see people use like goofy bulkheads, which are really hard to use and they tend to loosen up. Uh, but this basically has an ORB on each side and bolts into a firewall or any type of material trying to pass through. Uh, super easy to install and it allows you to service your lines on each side without having to push them all the way back through the firewall through like sharp metal and stuff. And it keeps them from resting on sharp metal. So if you need to pull the engine out, you can just unloosen these or intake off, you can loosen these intercooler lines, pull the whole thing off. You don't have to feed them back or try to like, you know, manipulate them around. And then also on the other side of the firewall, you know, if you want to pull the lines out to redo the carpet or work on stuff, get it out of the way, you can without taking it out of the engine bay. It's super helpful and it's one of my favorite products, even though it's super simple. I run it on all of our boosted cars. I definitely would suggest it. I'll put a link to this in the description below. Lastly, I'm gonna cover procedure. So depending on what type of racing and how, how your car responds, you're all gonna adapt to a different procedure. I know like Justin Martin on his 3,500 horsepower, 72 Nova LDR car. On his car, it is really working that intercooler pretty hard. So he will actually not only drain the fluid between rounds, he will typically cycle some cold water to get it really cold drain that out and that pre-chills the intercooler and everything and then he'll put another batch of ice in. Um, on my Nova, what I've found is I will grab like the little five pound bags of ice from any gas station. Like on race week, I'll just grab two or three, however many passes I'm gonna make um, on the way. And I will just drain the water to about half tank on that five gallon tank. I will pour one bag of ice in put the lid on it and then I'll put a towel over it just so it keeps the direct heat from outside. And that's all I do. Even between rounds, I don't cycle cold water unless it's like, I think one time I did that on race week, it was like 110 degrees. We sat in the lanes and by the time I got back, the water actually was pretty warm. Otherwise, if it's relatively cool, you don't have to do that. The five pounds of ice almost fills it probably like an inch or two from the top of the ice tank. Um, and from there, I just have like a curled up vent and I never have water come out of it and that's sufficient. And like I said, I will do that before I pull into the lanes. You can drive the car in the lanes. Once you get to the lanes, turn your ice water intercooler pump, whatever you wanna call it on. And then basically from there, as soon as I pull into the burnout box, right before I do a burnout, I'll turn the ice water pump on. It'll start circulating, pre-cool it, and I'll let it run until the end of the track, and then I will turn it off. If you still have ice water, you could keep running it to keep it cool between rounds uh, before you drain it, but that's all personal preference. Um, but other than that, it's really simple. Another question we get is which is the inlet and which is the outlet on these uh, intercoolers, and the answer is doesn't matter. They're not directional. Unlike a radiator, they're not gravity fed like that and they don't have uh, those types of issues. Another topic that uh, people ask me often is, uh, do I need a heat exchanger when I'm cruising around on the street or whatever? Uh, do I need, what do I do? And my answer is on race week, we do nothing. We don't turn the intercooler pump on while we're driving down the road. We're not trying to boil that water. Basically that water is gonna make its way out of the intercooler and just back into the tank. And we're gonna drive down the road. You can use that intercooler tank and ice it down for cold snacks or for sodas, whatever you wanna chill in there that's not gonna be susceptible to water. But generally speaking, if you're just driving a vehicle normal, you don't need anything about the intercooler. You're gonna get a little bit of air from the turbos, uh, but it's not 
going to build up and take air temperatures that are absurd that are causing detonation or any type of issue. So the uh, ability to drive on an air to water intercooler isn't something that is lost. It's just that you don't really need to add a heat exchanger and add complexity to it. Now, if you're road racing and stuff, that's off my knowledge base um, as far as ex heat exchanger with an intercooler. I do know one of the cool things that you guys should look up is the inner chiller. Some company in Australia makes it uh, for some superchargers like LSAs and stuff. It actually works off the air conditioning, but that's a whole different topic and a whole different day. Looking at doing one of those on my Blue Nova right now. So before I end this video, all of this stuff you can get on Motion Raceworks, even though it wasn't meant to be a product plug, but this intercooler is simply awesome. I've tried several different ones. The nice thing about this is it doesn't take up all your passenger floor space. Um, it works extremely well and reduces the amount of tubing. So a couple things I wanna cover before we're done here. Don't forget about the flow. Don't ignore it. Get yourself a good water pump. Like I said, these Davies Craig ones are under $200. They work extremely well. They're just super durable. The nice thing is they can also screw right onto the side of the tank so you don't have a bunch of extra fittings and hoses. The intercooler, uh, not all cores are created equal even though we didn't cover that, but get yourself a good intercooler. Pay attention to the line size. Don't undersize the line size. Definitely take some thought into what style line you're gonna use and where it's being used. If you have a bunch of line running past hot stuff, I strongly recommend not using that nylon style hose. And then as far as tank size, a good general rule of thumb is on a turbocharged car, probably a five-ish to five to six gallon tank. And then on a supercharger, probably a little bit bigger. They run a little bit hotter. If you guys have more comments and questions, we can of course cover more in-depth detail on all this stuff. I definitely encourage you to drop me a comment below with a question for the next Tech Tip Tuesday. We're listening, we're watching. That's how we get our ideas. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time.